are these people? This actually mm-hmm. might be a fun story. So, like, if you want to share what it is, yeah. And I'll be curious to see what people in the chat think. So, so we're going to talk if about. You want to explain the premise? Blood money. So this is a piece out of Mint Press from Alan McLeod. Um, the top ten politicians taking the most Israeli lobby cash. Right, very clickbaity title, McLeod. Whoop. I like it. Like it a lot. Um, yes, you were saying. So let us know in the comments who you think the top three or the top five. Yes. Um, politicians are. Yep, and we're going to start off with right, um, right, right at the top. Right at the top, we're going for so a little bit of intro. So as the Israeli attack on Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria intensifies, good on you, McLeod, for including those two. Um, the U.S. public watch in on a gasp. A new poll finds the Americans support a permanent ceasefire by more than a two-to-one ratio including the vast majority of Democrats and a plurality of Republicans. Okay. So, and yet, despite this, the only 4% of elected members of the House support even a temporary ceasefire. And the United States continues to veto UN resolutions working towards ending the violence. Walter Hickson, historian concentrating on U.S. foreign relations, told Mint Press, unfettered support for Israel and the lobby consistently puts the United States at odds with international human rights organizations and the vast majority of nations over Israel's war crimes and blatant violations of international law. The current UN vote on a ceasefire in Gaza, which the U.S. vetoed, is just the latest example. Here, Hickson is referring to the pro-Israel lobby, a loose connection of influential groups that spend millions on pressure campaigns, outreach programs, and donations to American politicians, all with one goal in mind, making sure the United States supports the Israeli government's policies full stop, including backing Israeli expansion, blocking Palestinian statehood, and opposing the growing boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement at home. So, internationally, Israel has lost virtually all its support, but it still has one major backer, the U.S. government. Part of this is undoubtedly down to the extraordinary lengths the lobby goes to secure backing, including showering U.S. politicians with millions of dollars in contributions. In this investigation, Mint Press News breaks down the top 10 currently serving politicians who have taken the most pro-Israel cash since 1990. Going back to the 90s, baby. Number one, Joseph Biden, to the tune of 4346000 Two hundred and sixty-four dollars since nineteen ninety. Care Bear. Okay, so the yeah. largest recipient of Israel lobby money is President Joe Biden. From the beginning of his political career, Biden, according to his biography Branko Marsetic, established himself as an implacable friend of Israel, spending his Senate career showering Israel with unquestioning support even when its behavior elicited bipartisan outrage. The future president was a key figure in securing record sums of U.S. aid to the Jewish state and helped block a 1998 peace proposal with Palestine. Oh, I thought this all started on October 7th, Care Bear. What was that? Yeah. 1998? Okay. Um, the The support for Israeli policies has continued into the present, with his administration insisting that there are no red lines that it could cross that would cause cause it to lose American support. In essence, Biden has given Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu a carte blanche to break any rules, norms, or laws he wishes to. Look at him. Look at him go up those stairs. He couldn't do that now. <laughs> right? Like he'd be he'd be fucking yeah. high stepping up those stairs. Look at that. Um so this is included <coughs> ethnic cleansing and war crimes, such as the bombing of schools, hospitals. In places of worship, using banned weapons like white phosphorus munitions, the arms Israel is using come supplied directly by the U.S. In November, the Biden administration rubber-stamped another $14.5 billion military aid package to Israel. 
ensuring the carnage would continue. For his staunch support, Biden has received more than 4.3 million from pro-Israel groups since 1990. So I brought this. This is from Censored Men. I'll, I want to show you what that 4.3 million gets you. And uh, here I did go. more fundraisers for APAC in the 70s and early 80s than uh, I, just about as many as anybody. If I know APAC as well as I think I do, I don't think there's any senator who's ever done more fundraisers for APAC or gone around the country more for APAC. And my father pointed out to me, I did not need to be a Jew to be a Zionist. For I am. Israel is essential to the security of Jews worldwide. Israel's legitimacy and our support for it is not a matter of debate. It is not a matter of debate. Don't raise it with us. Do not raise it with us. It is not negotiable. There's no apology to be made. None. It is the best $3 billion investment we make. Were there not an Israel, the United States of America would have to invent an Israel to protect her interest in the region. I say again, you need not be a Jew to be a Zionist. You know, I used to say, early on when I was a kid, I'd say, when I was a young senator, I'd say, if I were a Jew, I'd be a Zionist. I am a Zionist. You don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. Israel, Israel is the single greatest strength America has in the Middle East. I always say to my friends when they say those things to you, I say, imagine our circumstance in the world were there no Israel. How many battleships would there be? How many troops would be stationed? Progress occurs in the Middle East when everyone knows there's simply no space between the United States and Israel. There is no space between the United States and Israel when it comes to Israel's security. The security of Israel and the United States is inextricably tied. And we will never, ever, ever abandon Israel out of our own self-interest. Yeah, what you what you send me? Mm. Um, I sent you a clip from Twitter, Jesse. I kind of read through this last night, uh, but okay. if you mention this person, um, mm. it's Nancy. It might okay. be a good clip to show. So, sure, I'll I'll play that. Um, I don't think it mentions Nancy, but she is in the um well, the same She's path that there. supports like, Chantel not Brown that high, but like, supports her. So right. the, the, we'll get to that in a bit. I have said to people when they ask me, if this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid. I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. That's fundamental. I have said... Okay. So... Oh, okay. I keep doing that. Right. If this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid. And I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. He doesn't even call it aid. So, cooperation with Israel. Mm. But yeah. With your money, folks. Yep. So. That's Joseph Biden. Oh. On to the next one. Uh, Robert Menendez, two million four hundred eighty-three dollars and two two hundred five, four two million two and a half million, two and a half million. You know, we're just gonna round up that that one. Um, <laughs> the New Jersey Center has received nearly two and a half million in contributions, and in the wake of the Hamas attack on October seventh has been a key figure in the drumming up support for Israel, describing Operation al Aska Flood as barbaric atrocities that were an affront to humankind itself. Menendez gave an impassioned speech on the Senate floor where he addressed Biden directly, stating, here we go, of unspeakable evil, we must not mince words. We must not waver in our resolve. Every single one of us in this chamber has a moral responsibility to speak out unequivocally and unapologetically as we stand shoulder to shoulder with Israel and her people. Now, I've been staunchly divided, uh, devoted to this cause for 31 years in Congress. 
31 years, K Bear. He's been on that. So, can I go to the next slide, please? Thank you. He went on to claim that Israel and the United States are intrinsically linked and were founded on the same principle. Uh, yeah, exploiting their indigenous. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> <laughs> Menendez also courted controversy after he demanded the U.S. help Israel wipe Hamas from the face of the earth, even as Israel was leveling Gaza by carpet bombing it. In October, he co-sponsored a Senate resolution standing with Israel against terrorism that passed unanimously without dissent. Next up, Mitch McConnell, Care Bear. Um, <laughs> almost two, almost two million here. Yep. The Senate Minority Leader is one of the most powerful politicians in America and has used his influence to attempt to force through legislation criminalizing BDS. He's described the peaceful tactic as an economic form of anti-Semitism that targets Israel. McConnell is known to be very close to Prime Minister Netanyahu and supported a bill condemning the UN and calling on the U.S. to continue to veto any UN resolution critical of Israel. Last month, he strongly opposed steps taken towards applying basic U.S. and international law on weapons shipments to Israel. Under current U.S. law, Washington is duty-bound to stop supplying arms to nations committing serious human rights violations. McConnell, however, said that applying these standards to Israel would be ridiculous. Explaining that, our relationship with Israel is the closest national security relationship we have with any country in the world, Caribbean. So, and to condition, in effect, our assistance to Israel to their meeting our standards, it seems to me, is totally unnecessary. This is a democracy, a great ally of ours, and I do not think we need to condition the support that hopefully we will give to Israel very soon. McConnell has received nearly two million from pro-Israeli groups, right? Right. Number four, Chucky Obviously. the Shoe <laughs> at one seven one point seven. I saw, I saw some of you guys put him at number one. Uh, so he's up there. Yeah. So next on the list is McConnell's Democratic opponent, Senate Majority he's the Leader. Highest too. Yep. Chuck Schumer, who had taken over 1.7 million from Israeli lobbying groups. In recent weeks, Schumer has taken the lead in steering the public conversation away from Israel's crimes and towards a supposed rise in anti-Semitism across America. To us, the Jewish people, the rise in anti-Semitism is a crisis, a five-alarm fire that must be extinguished. The New York senator said, adding that Jewish Americans are feeling singled out, targeted, and isolated in many ways. We feel alone. The idea that anti-Semitic hate is, explo is exploding across the United States comes largely from a report published by the ADL, which claims that anti-Semitic incidents have risen by 337% since October 7th. Buried in okay. the small print, however, is the fact that 45% of these, quote, anti-Semitic incidents the ADL has tallied are pro-Palestine pro-peace marches calling for ceasefires, including ones led by Jewish groups like If Not Now or Jewish Voice for Peace. Mint Press recently published an investigation into the ADL's fudge numbers and its history of working for Israel and spying on progressive American groups, which we covered here on this channel. You can yeah, go check that out in our playlist below. So there he is. Look, here's Chucky the Shoom. Who is he with, Care yeah. Bear? Uh, you recognize, you recognize that's that face? Mike Johnson, that's Johnson and Jeffries. Yeah, Jeffries. Also, this is in 2023, November 4th. Also, also shells. Yep. So Schumer, however, has deliberately tried to conflate opposition to Israel's bombardment of its neighbors with anti-Jewish racism, writing, today, too many Americans are exploiting arguments against Israel and leaping toward a virulent anti-Semitism. The normalization and intensifying of the rise in hate is the danger many Jewish people fear most. He has gone so far as to label David, Dave Zirin, a Jewish journalist who supports justice for Palestinians, as an anti-Semite. 
as Senate Majority Leader Schumer has used his influence to push the military aid packages to Israel, even as it carries out actions many have labeled war crimes, writing that one of the most important tasks we must finish is taking up and passing a funding bill to ensure we, as well as our friends and partners in Ukraine, Israel, and the Indo-Pacific region have the necessary military capabilities to confront and deter our adversaries and competitors. Taiwan, he's talking about you. <laughs> uh huh. Pay attention. He added that senators should be prepared to stay in Washington until we finish our work, and that they should expect to work long days and nights, and potentially weekends in December until the deal was done. Up next, Steny Hoyer at 1.6 million. Former House Majority Leader is one of Israel's most vocal supporters in the House of Representatives. Lawyers demanded that Congress must immediately and unconditionally fund Israel. That sounds like RFK. Um, thereby giving the Netanyahu administration the green light to do whatever it pleases. An ardent Zionist, the Maryland native, explained that he believes it is the world's duty that set aside a land, a land that Israel has occupied for millennia. Huh? What? Occupied? Hmm, strange. And said, this is your place of security. <laughs> this is your place of sovereignty. This is your place of safety. Oh, if it's so safe, what are you worried about there? There, guys. Um, earlier this month, Hoyer also voted in favor of a bill stating that anti-Zionism is inherently anti-Semitic, thereby declaring all criticisms of Israel to be invalid and racist. Hoyer has received more than 1.6 million in donations from pro-Israeli lobbying groups. Next up, Ted Cruz. Over his career, the Texas Republican has received 1.3 million from the Israel lobby after October 7th. Cruz sprang into action, announcing that it was critical that every American support Israel 100%. Israel is going to be demonized by Democrats and the current corrupt corporate media. Doesn't sound like they do that there, Ted, but, you know, okay. We need to make clear that Hamas is using human shields. We've covered that that's complete and utter bullshit. And Israel has the right to defend itself. Cruz said, hitting many of the classic pro-Israeli talking points. Cruz also went above and beyond in the defense of Israeli crimes in a bizarre interview with Breaking Points' Ryan Grimm when asked if he opposes Israeli officials suggesting a nuclear attack on Gaza. Cruz replied, don't worry, guys. I didn't make you listen to Ryan Grimm. Just Ted Cruz. <laughs> Just Ted. <laughs> I, I condemn you. nothing that the Israeli government is doing. I, I stand with the people of Israel. And let me explain. There is a qualitative difference. The Israeli government does not target civilians. They target military targets. Um, are, you, are, you, uh, are, you, are you sure about that? Uh, unless you, he's talking about Palestinians as military targets, you, which I'm are, sure are he sure meant. About that? Are you sure about that? <laughs> like... You know, it, it definitely targets their own civilians, but, you know, I digress. Um, so I condemn nothing the Israeli government is doing. The Israeli government does not target civilians. They target military targets. There is no military on the face of the planet, including the U.S. military, that goes to the length that the Israeli military goes to avoid civilian casualties. I mean, just lie. So I guess the 20,000 who are dead now were just military targets. Yes, all of them. So, when confronted with statements from the IDF directly refuting his point from the IDF, noting that their focus is on damage, not precision, Cruz flipped his answer around, replying, yes, damage to Hamas, to terrorists. And when Grimm gave him more statements from senior IDF officials explicitly contradicting his previous statement, Cruz retorted, that's simply not true. They are targeting the terrorists thereby defending the IDF, even from itself. Okay. Next up, Ron Wyden, right? At $1.2 million, Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat from Oregon, has been one of Israel's staunchest advocates in Washington, supporting President Trump's decision to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and opposing BDS in all its forms. Remember Trump wanted to do that? You remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember. Yeah, I do. 
In 2017, he co-sponsored a bill that made it a federal crime, punishable by a maximum prison sentence of 20 years. For Americans to participate in or even encourage boycotts against Israeli and illegal Israeli settlements. On the settlement, he was one of the most vigorous opponents of UN Security Council Resolution 200, 2334, which described them as a flagrant violation of international law. For his trouble, Biden has received $1,279,000. And $376 from pro Israeli groups. Everyone's favorite Dick, Dick Durbin, um, at $1.1 million. In some ways, Dick Durbin owes his political career to the Israeli lobby. In 1982, the then obscure college professor benefited enormously from APAC money to defeat incumbent Paul Findley, strong proponent of the Palestinian people. The Illinois Democrat has called for immediate military aid to Israel and co-signed a Senate resolution reaffirming Washington's support for Israel's right to self-defense in the wake of October 7th. Despite this, he's angered some in the pro-Israel crowd by supporting President Obama's initiatives to reduce tensions with Iran and has now come out in favor of a ceasefire in Gaza. Hmm. I guess you're not getting enough money there, Dick? Is that right? You want to get to like Ted Cruz's numbers, maybe? <laughs> so, number nine, got Josh Gothamer, right, at $1.1 million, despite only being in office since 2017. Okay, Gothamer has already received more than $1.1 million from pro-Israeli lobbying groups. The New Jersey congressman has served as a pro-Israeli attack dog in Washington, co-sponsoring the bill, equating opposition to Israeli government policy with anti-Semitism, and introducing legislation to block and criminalize boycotting the state of Israel. In the wake of October 7th, Gothheimer has attempted to cancel a number of public figures. Early this month, for instance, he tried to pressure Rutgers University into calling off an event on Palestine featuring former CNN anchor Mark Lamont Hill and organizer and journalist Nick Estes, both of whom support Palestinian rights and statehood. Almost like some people did with the Harvard person right recently, yes. right? Yes. So, Gothamer speaks at the American Zionist movement in Washington, D.C. on December 12th, 2018. Right? Just in case people wanted to know where he stood. Gothamer has even caused rifts within his own party, attacking the small progressive wing of Democrats who have failed to toe the line on Israel and Hamas. Last night, 15 of my Democratic colleagues voted against standing with our ally Israel and condemning Hamas terrorists who brutally murdered, raped, and kidnapped babies, children, men, women, and elderly, including Americans, which we know is more bullshit. Um, they are despicable and do not speak for our party, he wrote, making a number of highly incendiary and questionable assertions. Number 10, Chantel Brown. At one million, almost even, perhaps no other political case reveals the power of the Israeli lobby than Chantel Brown. In 2011, Nina Turner, Democratic Socialist National Co-Chair of Bernie Sanders' 2020 election campaign, and an outspoken advocate for justice in Palestine, ran for election in Ohio's 11th Congressional District. Her opponent was the little-known but strongly pro-Israel Brown. Brown received more pro-Israel money than any other politician nationwide during the two-year election cycle. However, helping her overcome a double-digit polling deficit to defeat Turner, over $1 million was spent plastering Cleveland with attack ads against Turner. In her acceptance speech, Brown praised Israel and later thanked the Jewish community for helping me get over the finish line. Since then, she has supported Israeli actions in Gaza and rejected the ideal the idea of Israel as an apartheid state, writing, let's be clear, Israel's not an apartheid state. Any mischaracterizations otherwise attempt to delegitimize Israel, a robust democracy, and will only serve to fuel rising anti-Semitism. I will always advocate for a strong U.S.-Israeli relationship founded on our shared values. Which Sounds like there's, uh, well, we talked about that earlier, you know? <laughs> Um, I like to hear uh, from Chantel, not you. Like, yes. yeah, I feel you. Um, 
So just in case you remember these, right? This is DMFI pack, which I'm gonna pull up here on another monitor while everyone looks at this graph. That's that's how much they spent to oppose Turner, right? Up to literally 1.2, right? So, and to support Brown goes up to almost two. So what is this DMFI pack you ask? Colin, mm -hmm. if I could actually spell on my other monitor. Um, here we go. We're going to take a look real quick. So here they are. Electing pro-Israel Democrats. Would you like to see their, their candidates for 2024? Yes, yes sure. you would. Not so, particularly, but... Let's... We got... Here, I can also do a bit of this. Um, all these people. Look, there's Nancy. Uh, Gothamer. Gothamer. Chantel. Yeah, Stinny Hoyer. Um, Hakeem Jeffries. Jeez. Um, what else we got? Catherine Clark. Jim Clyburn. Burn. Right? Costa. Um... Haley Menendez. Stevens, Menendez, Richie Torres. Richie. Look, Richie Torres is here. Um, who else we got? Daddy. Debbie Washerman Schultz. Um, and that's it for now. It. Um, I think there are more, right? They have their whole oh, yeah. pack candidates there. I don't need to give them endorsements. So let's back out of that. But yeah, so that's that's it. Oh, wait, I have a bit of extra. Thank you, Senator Sanders, for your strong opposition to a permanent ceasefire with Hamas. In terms of a permanent ceasefire, I don't know how you could have a permanent ceasefire with Hamas, who has said before October 7th and after October 7th that they want to destroy Israel. They want a permanent war. I don't know how you have a permanent ceasefire with an attitude like that. Any questions, Kerber? I mean, I should have uh, took a calculator and told <laughs> yeah. him up all of that, but I would imagine that was around 10... Yeah, 10, 10 million? 10 million, yeah. yeah at least. Uh, around that. And that's around, just what's I'll out say, in the open. Right, so, so you can give ten million <laughs> to politicians to promote your Zionist views, mm -hmm. but not on health care, not on education, not on you know fill in the blank of something that would be popular, but more or less the bullshit that we're seeing in terms of Israel right now, like yep. it's. I mean, I mean, we've talked about this, but it's just amazing how it's actually really fascinating to see how the Israel lobby is so organized and and so powerful that they have this grip on every, pretty much every single one of our congressmen, women, and senators in government. And even if they're, and even if for um, politicians who are not vibing with Israel lobby at all, they're still affected by it. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing of this money that's going to waste, and not on things that really matter for the American people. Like that's what's just fascinating to me out of all of this. I mean, it's not surprising given. What we've reported on, and I know Savvy has talked about this in depth. I know Ariane has talked about this in depth. I know Do Distance has talked about this. So, yep. independent media, we've talked about like just the corruption, you know, regarding the Israel lobby as far as these politicians. But it, it's still amazing that, you know, the dissonance in terms of you're able to do this, you're able to rally behind a country in the Middle East and nothing in this way for our own needs here. Yeah. Like, that's just what's amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Well, let us know what you think. 
who who else do you think should have been on that list? Leave it in the comment below. Uh, share this share this video. Share this stream. We appreciate all the help we can get. We're trying to get to two K subscribers, so hit that subscribe button. Right next to it's the like button. Those should be lighting up. I think Is that, isn't that how it works? If I say like and subscribe, those things are supposed to supposed to happen. Um, yeah. So so do that. 